Hi guys, welcome to part two in this video series where we're creating a bezel set tapered shouldered ring for this absolute mammoth of a rotated quartz that I own. In the first part, you saw how we created a realistic and proportionate three dimensional copy of the actual gemstone. Now, in part two, we're going to be making the tapered bezel to set the stone in. So, let's get started. Now, before we start the setting proper, we need to include a finger rail into our design so we know where exactly to position the stone. So to do that, I'm going to go into the front view. I'm going to go onto my layer three, and I think I'll change the color of this layer to a shade of brown. Let's go with one above salmon. I'm going to use a circle from the center, the center being 0, 0. Make sure that in the command bar, I'm on diameter, and I'm going to type in 16.7 and left click which is about a British size M. And I'm next going to move the stone using the transform move command from the coolit to the quad snap at the top of our finger rail. Now I want to move the stone up about a millimeter so that I've got a margin of error underneath the stone so that if the stone is set slightly deeper than we anticipate, that it's not in danger of poking through and getting damaged. So to move that, I'm going to click the stone, click the green gumball arrow, Type one and enter, and that will move it vertically up one millimeter. So just to demonstrate, if I add in a linear dimension from the end of the cooler to here, we can see we've got a one millimeter gap. Now into the top view, we're going to start planning the top of the setting edge. If you've lost the original lips that we used to create to scale the stone, don't worry, we can redraw it. So draw a lips from the center, zero comma zero. Snap to the top of the stone and the side. And now we've retraced the perimeter. So I'm going to turn the three dimensional stone off and we're going to start offsetting these curves. So the first step is to offset this ellipse. So with the offset curve command inwards by a small amount. Now this is personal preference, but I like to do about 0.1 of a millimeter so that my setting is 0.2 of a millimeter in each uh, axis smaller than the stone. So that means that when I come to set the stone, if I've not got quite the amount of shrinkage that I anticipate, or the shape of the stone is slightly out from what I've traced, I've got a margin of error to cut a nice tight seat. So you can see here it's ever so slightly smaller. Now again, personal preference, but that's what I like to do. So now that we've defined the inside edge of the setting wall, we need to offset this curve outwards to give a thickness to the setting edge. Now personally, for a stone of this size, and assuming that we're casting in silver, I would want a setting wall of around 0.9 to one millimeter. So I'm going to offset this curve outwards with the offset command one, enter and click outside. So we define the setting edge as one. Now the thickness of the edge can vary depending upon who's setting the stone, the size of the stone and the material that the bezel is being cast in. So again, it's just personal preference. What you do is up to you. Now, back into the front view, I'm going to grab these two ellipses just to demonstrate. I've have both of them selected here and I'm going to use the gumball to drag them up so that they sit just below the level of the girdle. So now that we have the inner and outer bezel curve in place we can start to create the tapered surfaces which will run down underneath the stone. To do that we're going to use a solid tapered extrude. So let's go into a new layer then go solid extrude planar curve tapered. Select curve to extrude is our outer curve I'm going to press enter and you can see that we have a live um, extrusion tool come up, which is a tapered solid. Now, the first thing we want to change is the draft angle. Now, mine's currently set to 17 and that's probably actually the correct angle for a stone like this. Now, the reason that I normally go with 17 degrees is because that is the same as the collet block and punch set that I would usually use to make a bezel for a colored stone by hand. So let's stick with 17. And the distance that we want to come down, I'm going to do by eye. And I'm going back into the front view, as you can see, and pull this so it's just inside the curvature of the finger rail. And you'll see why later. Now back into perspective, if we turn the stone off, you can see that we've got a solid tapered bezel. So what we need to do now is hollow this out to give us a wall thickness. So to do that, we're going to use the shell command. So in the command bar, I'm going to type shell change my thickness to one millimeter. And then it asks me to select the faces to remove from the closed poly surface. 
So the open faces are the top and the bottom. Enter, and there it will instantly shell our tapered solid with a one millimeter wall. So what I like to do now is check that my stone is going to successfully seat into this tapered bezel. So let's go into the front view. I'm going to go into shaded, turn the stone back on, and we're going to introduce a clipping plane. And this will give me an instant cross section. So I type clipping plane into the command bar and drag a box from the top left to the bottom right that passes through both the stone and the tapered bezel. And here you can see we have an instant cross section. And what I'm looking for is an intersection between the bezel wall and the pavilion of the stone, which is very, very slight and only just at the top, which is exactly what I've got here. So I know that when I come to burn my seat for this stone, I won't be taking forever to cut away into here to make this fit. And also I won't be thinning out the wall to get the bezel to sit down low. So 17 degrees was clearly the right choice in this instance. So we can get rid of the clipping plate now. Our next thing to do is to add in the top of our bezel wall. And this is the edge that we're going to use to set the stone. I'm going to turn my diamond off for the moment. I'm going to select my inner curve and outer curve. Now back into the front view, I'm going to turn the stone back on and we're going to go to solid extrude plenty curve straight and extrude this wall straight up so it's approximately halfway up the crown of the stone. Now you could go a little bit higher, but for a stone of this size, which is quite large, halfway should be adequate. So about there. Now the reason that I go about halfway up the crown is to make sure that I've got enough material above the girdle to hammer down or push over the stone and have enough thickness left to dress the edge. So for me, that's about halfway again for a stone of this size. Now much smaller stones, say anything under about four millimeters, maybe three, always go flush with the table. Now the last little thing that I like to do on the top of my bezel edge is to add a small chamfer so that I've got a starting angle to follow with my hammer action uh, compressed air pushing tool. So to do that, we're gonna to go to solid, fillet edge, chamfer edge. Now we know that our thickness is one millimeter, so I'm going to change the chamfer distance to 0.5. That's 50% of one. Click the edge, press enter twice, and there I've imparted a small chamfer to help me get started with my hammering. Now we can move on to doing the shank. Thanks for watching the second part in this video tutorial series. Look out for part three, where we'll be creating a tapered shouldered shank to fit our setting, and all without the use of a single profile or rail sweep. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comments section, and I'll try my best to answer them. To see more content like this, please follow my page on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you're considering inquiring about booking a bespoke online CAD lesson with me, don't hesitate to get in touch. I'd be happy to discuss it with you. See you next time.